A piece in the New York Times by Laura DeAndrea Tyson and Owen, Z uh, Owen Zidar. Uh, Tyson is a professor at the Haas School of Business at the University of California, Berkeley. Was a chairperson of the Council of Economic Affairs under President Clinton. Zadar is a doctoral student at economics in the University of California, Berkeley. Was formerly an analyst at Bain Capital Adventures. They start by talking about uh, Mitt Romney's plan to reduce taxes for everyone. That's how come the rich will maintain their share of taxes. He will cut taxes on millionaires. It's just that he's going to cut taxes on everyone so that the share in which they pay of taxes of the total revenue, not the share of their income, their share of their income will go down, but the share of total revenue will stay at the same, which is roughly commensurate. Uh, I think the top 20% uh, pays about 20% about of the revenue that comes in, eh, more or less. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So he's going to maintain that by cutting their taxes. So essentially, less revenue comes in, the uh, deficit expands, the debt expands. I don't know if that's necessarily a problem, but the issue is whether or not the idea of cutting taxes on rich people let's say the top 5% as opposed to the bottom 95%, actually creates more jobs. Well, they have published a study which shows that, mm, no. Romney's plan arrests on the assertion that lower taxes for high-income taxpayers will, econo will increase economic activity and employment and therefore increase the amount of money that they make, the rich people, and will raise revenue. Right? That's the Laffer curve. That's the uh, supply-side economics. It's, of course, bunk, and even more so during a recession. The regression analysis and graph in which it's based reveal that there is no link between income tax cuts for the top 5% and subsequent job return creation. We also examined the relation between tax cuts for the top 10% and subsequent job creation and found the same results. The Reagan tax cut of 1982, the Clinton tax increase of 93, and the Bush tax cut of 2003, and subsequent employment growth were studied. Strong employment growth followed the Reagan cut, but the employment growth following the Clinton tax increase exceeded the employment growth following the Bush tax cut, which was comparable in size to the Reagan cut. Job growth at the state level after national tax cuts for high-income earners confirms the absence of a strong link between such cuts and the pace of job creation in the next two years. So short-term, cutting taxes for the top 5 or 10% does not create any significant increase in the number of jobs being created. If there were a strong link between job creation and tax cuts for high-income job creators, we should be able to see the effect somewhere, but we have found no evidence that such cuts lead to sustainability, uh, su substantially faster employment growth at the national, state, or even the zip code level. And this is important because we know that really there's like, what, a dozen counties in the country where there's this type of real money? Rich people tend to live together because it's nicer there. Tax cuts for everyone else are a much more effective path to job creation. There is a statistically significant and positive relationship between tax cuts for the bottom 95% and job growth at both the national and state levels. One, our results indicate that almost all the stimulative effect of income and payroll tax cuts on job creation in the short to medium run time frame, result from such cuts to the bottom 95%. Why, and this is something that we've repeated on this program over and over again, lower income taxpayers spend a greater share of their tax cut immediately. And overall, for that matter. And when they spend this money, 
It is essentially demand. Demand for products and services. That demand creates a need to hire more people to fulfill that demand. These demand side forces explain why consumption goes up much more after tax cuts for the bottom 95% than after equivalently sized cuts for the top 5%. Consumption still accounts for 70% of GDP. And, and get this, investment also increases after tax cuts for the bottom 95%, suggesting that shifting moderately sized tax cuts to the bottom 95% from the top 5% isn't a zero-sum trade-off between consumption and investment. See, what happens if you are in the top 5 or 10% of the income distribution? You have enough money that you're buying everything that you want or need. We're talking personal taxes here. And so what you do is you put it, you play that market and you play that money in the stock market. You gamble with it. Maybe you make some investments in some companies that are actually really real as opposed to just buying their stocks and playing the market. Well, it turns out that you still see that type of investment, at least in uh, real world things, and maybe some in the stock, to some degree when you give tax cuts to the bottom 95%, because not everybody's going to spend every dollar. Instead, an increase in demand and economic activity because of an increase in consumption also makes investment more attractive. So the stimulative effect of having the bottom 95% spend more actually increases investment from the top 5 to 10% because they see that demand is increasing. Theirs, of course, is not the only study to show this. The CBO did a study. Moody's chief economist, Mark Zandi, did a study. What about the long run? A recent review by three distinguished academic e economists also found no convincing activity that real economic activity responds materially to tax cut rate changes on top income earners. Also, the Congressional Research Service found no relationship between cuts in marginal tax rates for high income earners and growth in job creation. Now, I know this is science, so of course this is meaningless to most conservatives. But uh, for those among you who know people who are a little bit more reasonable, uh, a good study and um, abstract of that study in the New York Times on October 19th, that would have been probably Friday, uh, 